everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to go ahead and do one of my colored Zentangles in polymer clay. So I love doing this sort of thing, and to tell you the truth, I've been kind of like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, because sometimes I just get bogged down. And this is a place where I don't have to necessarily get bogged down. I could just go ahead, take a board, and create. So right here I had also a lot of scrap clay ends, and just scrap clay and you know everything in general so I decided to go ahead and I had this board that was already kind of pre-prepped with a piece of clay on the background and I thought let's go ahead and just fill it in so right here I'm taking one of my kaleidoscopes and I'm just gonna start overlapping pieces and putting them randomly down on my board and just enjoying creating Okay, so here when I was putting down that kaleidoscoping and just kind of figuring out, okay, where it's all gonna be placed, I knew I was gonna to have to put in some solid colors. So I decided that, you know, I had my blue, my red, my black, and my purple there off to my right side. And so I thought, let's go ahead and throw, throw down the purple first and we'll just see what we can get. All right, so I brought in some of my lavender clay here and I just took my blade and, you know, cut it down the side. And then, yes, I have some scrapbooking scissors. I love the scrapbooking scissors, yes. <laughs> because you could take these and the patterns that they cut in the clay are awesome. Now, just so you know, as a reference when it comes to doing this, make sure your clay is not super, super juicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not super, super juicy, but you know, not really, really moving a lot. You want this to be a little bit of a harder clay. So if your clay is a little bit harder, this works really good. And then again, once I did that, I'm just going to go ahead and I brought in some Kemper cutters and again, my blade just to kind of slice it down so I have a nice straight line on the other side. And we're going to just see what we can do. All right, so I took some of my scrap clay here and I, it was really mud and I added a little bit of black to it, but I wanted one solid strip, just one solid strip of color, you know, just as long as it was kind of neutral. And that's what this really was. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay down eventually that purple clay on top of it. Okay, so you can see me kind of cutting out some circular areas here in that purple clay, and that is so it acts really as kind of a window to the color beneath. And I do this a lot. I really love creating this particular aspect of more than one layer. There's something about really adding that extra depth or layer into these pictures that really draws the eye.
Okay, so I mentioned in the last segment how I love having that depth. Well, let's go ahead and I added in some tin foil forms here. And these are just, I used like a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, and I want to say quarter teaspoon or something. Um, you know, and I just made these tin foil forms out of my teaspoons, which is great. I love those. <laughs> I love those measurements. You know, what can I say? Anyways, I wrapped it up in this mud yet again, and I thought, well, let's just get them in place. This way, then I have something to work off of. All right, so right here I brought in some more of that mud eventually, and when I did, I also thought, let's go ahead and add in kind of some Natasha feel to this picture. So I went ahead and I decided to create some like heart-shaped forms, and I just loved the design that came out from them, and it turned out really great. Okay, so here I'm bringing in some black and I wanted to bring my camera in a little bit and give you guys an idea of what this thing looks like in, you know, closer up in detail. So you can really see those heart-shaped forms that I put in that are very Natasha-like. And I'm just filling in between the kaleidoscoping area where I had that scrap kaleidoscope along with those hearts. And that black really makes a difference, whether it's in ball form or just a sheet or whatever, the solids against the pattern make the picture work. You really need to have a nice, decent kind of balance a little bit um, between your solid colors and a lot of your, you know, really, really heavily designed areas. It will help to, you know, it'll, as I put it, when it comes to solid colors, against your pattern, it gives a place for the eye to rest. You really need to make sure the eye can rest somewhere every once in a while, just so it's not, you know, it's not so crazy. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> and it becomes almost like a Where's Waldo. <laughs> anyway, from here, I brought in a spiral cane. And again, this was a lot of pattern, but this pattern was big enough that it wasn't quite so tiny you know, when it came to all the little kaleidoscope features, that it, it also kind of added in a little bit of a resting area for your eye.
Okay, so at this point, the dynamic was not too bad, but I needed something that was gonna really give some contrast. And to me, I always go to my black. What can I say? I have to. Um, my black clay, I just thought, let's put in a sheet, just a small sheet, but something to just give it some punch. And especially against that really blase background, I mean, it's gonna get covered anyway, but I needed to bring in a real solid dark, dark because I had a lot of kind of lights going on. I wanted to be, you know, it was just kind of mud in the background. We needed to have something that would either go really dark or really light. And in this case, I thought, no, nah, let's go with my black. It'll make that statement. Okay, so right here again, I you know I cut another little like kind of long triangle of some purple, and I just kind of wove it back and forth on the black. This gives a really nice dynamic and another whole feature to the picture that just wasn't there before. Okay, so let's bring in the red and another really solid but very bright color. And I thought, you know, I've got such a blase background here with this kaleidoscoping and some of this, you know, uh, you know, scrap type Natasha's going on. So I thought, let's fill in with some really interesting eye popping red. And it really made a difference in this picture, especially as I went along and I was like, oh yeah, I like this. Let's go ahead and put some more in. <laughs> Okay, so right here, this really gets dramatized. You have that red, that purple, and that black. And that black background really sets off that red and purple. And so I just decided, let's go ahead and bring in some red balls. And as you can see right here, look at that. It's just a real dynamic statement. So remember, contrast, contrast, contrast with your polymer clay. Thank you. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start bringing in my knitting needles, but I wanted to put down a few more little black balls, especially on these particular kind of scrap Natasha's. They just really, you know, they came to a point and I thought, let's just add a little bit of panache to it, right? And so added in those little black balls and then brought in the knitting needles to help kind of make sure it was burnished down into the clay. All right, so right here I'm bringing in an almost like beige, really light beige or cream color clay here. I wanted to add in a little more detail to that purple strip right, you know, running down the center area here. And again, contrast, contrast, co contrast, because that purple is pretty dark and even the color behind it, pretty dark. I mean, you only have the red really popping out. So I thought I need another color here, something that's going to really be light and bright yet really draw attention and this is where that cream beige-ish like color comes into play.
Okay, so up until now, I've really ignored those tinfoil forms, and I thought, okay, I had covered them over with some mud, and I thought, no, 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 we need a color. So I took some of my turquoise, and I thought, let's just go ahead and wrap it, throw it in, and boom. <laughs> that draws the eye. That mud just kind of like pops now, right? <laughs> and I just love that. I mean, you could just take it, and it's like, okay, do I like the mud? No, it's not quite doing it for me. Okay, let's bring in a different color. And that's where that turquoise comes in. I'm just covering it over. It's something very simple to do. I'm just pulling off the bottom there and I'm placing that ball right back down. And from there, I am just thought, let's go ahead and add in more, add in more.
Okay, so here you could tell I'm really starting to bring in the detail on that largest tinfoil form. You can do all sorts of fun designs on these tinfoil pieces. I mean, they can get so dramatic and so interesting. So have fun with them. Okay, so at this point, you have only just a few little areas that I thought I need to just fill it in. And so that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm just going to be filling in a little bit more and adding in more of that detail. Thank you. 
All right, so when I do some of these zentangling form type pictures, I really like to bring in my metal because I have, oh my goodness, <laughs> I have so much junk jewelry, <laughs> either just because I like the piece in the store and I just want to, you know, buy it up at my thrift store or whatever. I figure it might come in really handy and it really does in these types of pictures. So the frame exactly you know the frame was gold okay i had a gold frame like thing going around so i thought okay i need to bring out my gold like jewelry kind of a thing my gold metal and let's just add it in i really love to add in chain i really like to add in kind of like circular pieces i had this heart piece which actually was a, a pin at one time i thought take off the back throw it on there and just see what it'll do for me and you know the nice thing about these chains i'm you know i'm kind of adhering it down with that nice black ball right there that i did with the big longer piece well i'm going to do the same over here you know you can always add in i i left it plain right okay but you can add in a jump ring and maybe a doodad you know you can do that with some of this metal jewelry so think about that as you're putting it together
Now, I really liked how well this picture was coming about. I really loved it, but I thought, ah, I can't seem to get away from my wire. <laughs> I have to always throw that thing in there. It, you know, there's something about being able to curl up some wire into some of this clay that just adds an element that, you know, I just can't get otherwise. So again, I'm taking, and this is 22 gauge wire, so it's fairly hefty, but I'm doing that because I want to do a little bit more to it <laughs> after I get this thing baked, because we're going to bake this here pretty quick. But I wanted to go ahead, add in some, a little bit of that extra wire and just tuck it into right where one of the main forms, where those main tin foil forms are at. And I'm using a little bit of glue to go ahead and make sure it's in there solid. Now at this point, it's been baked. So it's been baked pretty good. I'm just making sure I get that glue in there where it needs to go. And I'm gonna go around and eventually here, I'm gonna glue in some of my other pieces as well. All right, now that I've got, you know, most of this kind of finished, the thing is, you know, I, I can't help it. I get, <laughs> it's like the wire. I got to bring in my rhinestones. So I have my little pointed backed rhinestones and this works well when it comes to any of the indents I've made in the little balls on my clay, because I could just go ahead, put a little bit of super glue down and then just drop in a nice little rhinestone. And I love that because it gives it a little bit of flash a little bit of flair and you know I can random I, if I wanted to I could fill in every little indent or where I made that little indent in the clay all over this picture but I figured no that takes too much time <laughs> I'm just gonna highlight it in certain areas and just enjoy that
All right, so this is probably one of the more fun things I love doing. I have some gold chain here. I thought, let's go ahead and loop it around our wire. Yes. <laughs> and I love it because, see, look what it does. It will, when you bring it out just a little ways from the wire, when I put this on a wall somewhere, that wire just kind of, or I should say not wire, but the, you know, the chain itself dangles free from the whole aspect of all the clay pieces beneath it. And so it just, it makes it a nice, you know, moving element to this. I mean, I could pull that chain down, I can move it up a little bit, but I can really enjoy that part where it's not just in one place, I can move that chain around to where, oh, I like it this way this day, or I like it a little bit different another day. And so I have fun with that. Again, right here I'm finishing up, so I'm bringing it, and I'm not putting it everywhere, but some super glue a little bit so that we can make sure it adheres nice and firm to the background of our board. Okay, so here is the end result of creating my Zentangle and Scrap Clay number one. Please use this for study and reference, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest and bestest of hugs <laughs> to each and every one of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.